But you guys got another video here for you. Windows 11 24H2 will break the connection to your NAS and also other network devices that aren't configured for SMB signing. So if you've got a new NAS or some other new network hardware, it should already be working and configured correctly but there is a big chance that some device manufacturers that manufacture these devices probably didn't bother because it was strictly not a requirement at the time when they were making those devices now microsoft are recommending that you set up your smb signing for your nas also setting up your username and password and turning off any guest signing now, if none of these options are available, you can always try the software updates or firmware updates for your device or look out for any information on a manufacturer's website. Now, before we continue, let's have a quick word from today's video sponsor, CD Key Sales. If you're looking for a cheap Windows 11 Pro or a cheap Windows 10 Pro OEM key, then check out the links in the video description. Use my promo code capital B capital R 09 and apply that to your order. And once you submit your order, they will then send you your key. Now you can use PayPal to pay for all of your purchases. And once you've done that, you can then go ahead to the activation center and activate your version of Windows. It's as simple as that. Links are in the video description. Okay, so let's take a look at what Microsoft have to say. So accessing a third party NAS with SMB in Windows 11 24H2 may fail. And it basically says here, what's changed? So in Windows 11 24H2, we've made two major security changes that can affect your mapping drives to third-party consumer NASs or routers with USB storage. By default, SMB sign-in is required on all connections and also guest feedback is disabled on Windows 11 Pro editions. So this increases your security by preventing tampering on the network and stops relay attacks that sends credentials to malicious sites. Also, this increases your security when connecting to untrustworthy devices. Guess allows you to connect to SMB server with no username and password. While convenient for the maker of the NAS, it means that your device can be tricked into connecting to a malicious server without prompting for credentials, then given ransomware or having your data stolen. Now, SMB sign-in has been available in Windows for 30 years, but for the first time is now required by default on all connections. And you can see guest has been disabled in Windows for 25 years and SMB guest uh, fallback disabled since Windows 10 in Enterprise Educational and Pro and for Workstation editions. Both changes will make billions of devices, not just Windows, but everything running SMB that wants to talk to Windows more secure. So basically what happens with the third party NAS? They explain about it all there. I'm not gonna read all of that, but as you can see here, if signing isn't supported by your third party device, you may get an error and it will give you that error saying 0xc000a000. And there's also a status invalid signature uh, code there. And also, if the guest access is required by your third party NAS, you will get these particular types of errors, as you can see listed on the screen. I'll leave the link in the video description for you. But it also says how to solve the issue. And it says to solve this issue, we recommend you do the following in this order. And you can see them there. Enable SMB sign-in in your third party NAS. Disable guest access in your third party NAS. Enable a username and password in your third party NAS. Also, upgrade your NAS if you cannot enable sign in. Uh, you cannot disable guest or you cannot use a username or password. This NAS will usually have an upgrade option in its management software, possibly labeled as firmware update. Replace your NAS if you cannot upgrade your NAS software to support sign in and credentials. So, really, uh, they're asking you to stop using older NASs really that aren't capable of enabling and disabling these key features that Microsoft have now put in place. And they discuss about how you can go about doing it right here. Now, it's also important to mention that Microsoft haven't removed the ability to enable SMB1 on all editions of Windows 11. 
that have SMB1 disabled now by default on 24H2. And this has been the case for over a year now and in some editions, many years. So if you want to re-enable it, you can do. But of course, there will be some sort of risk involved by enabling uh, SMB1. So let me know your thoughts in the comments of the video. I'd be interested to read your opinions on whether you think this is a good idea or a bad idea. I think it's a good idea for security reasons, but they haven't probably thought about the amount of devices that are going to uh, need those requirements to work correctly. And unfortunately, Microsoft answer is basically just, uh, you know, throw it out and buy a new one. And not everyone can do this. And also it costs an absolute fortune to actually uh, purchase an as in the first place, which you were probably looking to use for many, many years. So the person in the comment section there of this article made a fair point, which is basically group policy editor isn't available in Windows Home editions. But anyway, I'll be interested to read your comments about what NAS you have and whether you use a NAS or whether this is going to affect you in one way or another. I'll be interested to read those comments. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Just want to say a quick shout out to all my YouTube members who join my YouTube members group. I appreciate the support and I'll catch you in the next video or I'll see you on a Discord server for a chat. Bye for now.